Hello, and welcome to the fifth lecture on this course on chemical process design. This lecture is going to examine the topic of distillation optimization, instrumentation and control, and column layout. We'll start in a similar way to how we started the discussion on reactor pressure vessel design by looking at an example of a process that contains multiple distillation columns operating at high pressure. In high pressure processes, there is a strong desire to minimize the number of pressure vessels operating at high pressure for good reasons of safety. So go on, go and get that cup of tea and let's sit down and have a think about a neat mechanical embodiment of a chemical process and where the mechanical embodiment and the chemical process may look somewhat different. So if you think back to your course on process synthesis earlier this term, you'll remember state task network analysis that allows you to convert a simple sequence of distillation columns into a partially coupled sequence <clears throat> or a fully coupled sequence. And on the board here, of course, I have a partially coupled sequence. What we have is a mixture of three components. Let's call them A, B and C in uh, true engineering nomenclature. And we'll see that the most volatile species here is A, and that is coming off the top of the primary distillation column. We've got an intermediate volatility species, which is B, and we've got our least volatile species, C. And we can see that the column configuration that we've elected to go with has a side stripper that allows us to separate B from some side drawers from the main column. Now, when we look at the chemical process, we see two distillation columns and three heat exchangers. However, remember that distillation columns are very tall pieces of equipment. They contain quite a high volume and there's probably quite a good incentive here. Again, thinking about the volume of a pressure vessel and the pressure that that pressure vessel contains to try and minimize that product of pressure times volume. So it would be really nice if we could get away with one pressure vessel here for the distillation column rather than two. And so we need to think innovatively and think, well, how can we combine these two systems in the same vessel? And here on the board is a schematic diagram of one way in which you can do that. It's called a divided wall column. And I've put for you on Moodle a very good review paper from the professional journal Chemical Engineering Practice on divided wall columns. And if we have a look in detail at that schematic diagram I've shown, we can see that in the stripping section of the column, the bottom of the column, we've got a configuration, I've drawn it with a packed bed, that looks very, very similar to the base of the primary column in the partially coupled sequence. We've just got a packed bed for the separating out of the least volatile component, C. Now, if we consider that um, side column that's shown in the partially coupled sequence, where we have a side draw taking what is ostensibly a mixture of a, B and C and putting it through that column with its own little condenser on it and we get our intermediate volatility component out B and if we compare that to the concept that we've got drawn on the right hand side of the divided wall column you've got your volatilized mixture of <coughs> excuse me A, B and C going up its own packed bed into a vapor draw where it's got its own condenser and its own reflux coming back into that same packed bed so the top right hand side of our divided wall column looks very much like the extra side stripper that we've put on the partially coupled sequence. Likewise, if we consider that part of the partially coupled sequence that separates off A from that mixture of A, B and C, we're probably going to have maybe more um, theoretical stages in order to do that. A in this case is our most volatile component. Again, we've got our own heat exchanger associated with that, our own condenser. But actually, if we think about it, the side stripper for B and the side stripper for A, we could kind of denote to be the same thing. They've got their independent heat exchange equipment. We've got a vapor flow upwards, starting with A, B and C. And in the case of our side stripper, we've got B as reflux. And in the case of our main column, we've got A as reflux. So if we think about that in terms of our divided wall column, we in effect have a, a kind of symmetric layout. The symmetry might be broken by having more theoretical stages in one side of the divided wall than the other. But if we look at the top left of our divided wall column, we've got our own packed bed or sequence of packed beds in this case. It could be trays. It doesn't matter. And we've got our own heat exchanger, our own condenser here dealing now with A and a reflux of A. And so what we have shown on the whiteboard for the divided wall system is a mechanical analogy of what we've written in the sketch process flow diagram for the partially coupled sequence. 
but it's contained within one pressure vessel, which simplifies things a great deal. So, neat mechanical design, innovative mechanical design here can help to neaten, if you like, our process and tighten up on the process safety. Now, divided wall columns aren't the only trick you can play with amalgamating column sections together. Go and have a look in the literature at chimney trays. And if you look at chimney trays, you'll see how you can actually concatenate lengths of column above one another, which is a very, very useful thing, not only in distillation, but if, for example, you've got scrubbing processes. And if you look at, for example, amine scrubbing of CO2, you'll find very often that you have different amine specifications for good energy reasons that are used to scrub out CO2. There's no point purifying amine to incredibly high purity to do the bulk of the scrubbing process. You might as well purify it to a, a relatively intermediate purity, which is a lot less energy intensive to take out the bulk of the CO2, and then just have some really highly purified amine just to polish off the product at the end. And you'd maybe do that in two or three different stages, which could be drawn as two or three different columns. But again, with clever mechanical design, you can concatenate these columns one above the other using chimney trays to divide the logical sections of column together. So I hope that's an enlightening thing for you to look at this morning. Um, so have a think about neat mechanical design whenever you come across your chemical process.